Hi, uh, here we are at uh, the 2012 World Championships in St. Petersburg, Florida, and we're talking to Gail Woolley, who has uh, been sailing contenders for a long time, and uh, he's uh, one of our mainstay U.S. sailors uh, based out of California. Hi, folks. Hey, Gail. So, yeah, you were just talking to me about how many uh, World Championships you've been to now? This is my 19th World Championship, and this is my 41st year of sailing the tender. I put a boat in the water January 1st, 1972. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, I guess you've helped uh, run a few uh, contender events that have uh, been here in the United States? The very first Worlds that I ever went to was the one that uh, my wife and I and Jim Anderson organized in 1976 at Palo Alto. Which oh, great. It's a shallow place. You really have to watch the tides carefully. You only get about four hours time in a, in a window. Right. Um, and then we were all curious about how well we had run a championship. So Yale and I went over to uh, Medeblik for the Europeans and we went to Kiel for the Worlds in uh, 1977. Wow. And then Jim Anderson joined me and we uh, put boats in a container. We shipped them out to uh, to Takapuna in New Zealand. Wow. So I think that might be the only world sailed in New Zealand. It's certainly the only one I've ever been to in New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think my we best have many well, there let's anymore. Say, 77, I finished 12th, which wow. was pretty good. That's and we had good. another American sailor who should have beat me all hollow, Paul Wells, uh, finished uh, 13th, but he had two breakdowns. Oh, yeah. And he was leading a race that the, the race committee abandoned. Oh. Oh, he was so fast. And he won that he was first place in the Europeans. Paul was a very fair, oh. very fast. He was a young sailor, not yeah, like, like me. Not like you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, it's a great sport. It's good for young and old alike. Um, and so how many sailors were at the first Worlds? That first Worlds, we had, a, I think it was 32 boats, and yeah. 20 of them were American, and uh, the other 12 were from someplace overseas. I met people like uh, David Pittman, Tony Smith, uh, Michael Beggs. The real founders of the real Contender founders League. of the Contender League. Yeah. yeah, that was really neat. And this year we're really happy. I think we have, what, 44 or 45 boats? At least like 43. That? Or 43 I, boats? Okay. Yeah, That's I, great. I think we'll only have 43 because Dan Gross is not going to be able to sell uh, the Oh, okay, okay. But uh, it's, uh, I think that's the most we've ever had in we've ever had North, on America. The North American continent. We have tried and tried and tried. We, the one at Santa Cruz in, in 86, yeah. I had maybe 30 boats. And we've tried up at Canada three times. And yep. And always around 30 boats. It's always boats. around 30 boats. So yeah. this is wonderful. We finally, yeah, the message finally got through to us. So this is the time of year to sail. Yeah. And, and I think this or maybe late fall is the other option that we yeah. can try to push. Yeah. Yep. No, it's uh, very exciting, and we have some of the uh, best sailors in contender fleets, and we also uh, pulled out uh, Ethan into Sailing Contenders, who helps organize the event, and he's, of course, a former 505 world champion and fantastic sailor, so it's great to have him in the yeah, class now. Yeah, Ethan's been a real breath of fresh air. Yep. Uh, I was so excited when he called me up and asked about the wisdom of <laughs> buying a contender. He finally decided it was unwise, but he decided to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, I think we've... Uh, Got a breath of a few more uh, uh, faces into uh, the contender fleet in the U.S. class. We're starting so to get good. some new boats moved yep. into the U.S., and that really helps improve the breed. Right. Uh, and we also had uh, another guy in California you were sailing with a bit, but he couldn't make it because he Kirk tours. Uh, well, no, um, Philip can. Oh, he yeah, tours Philip, Philip bicep, so right. he couldn't yeah. come out. So uh, that's too bad. Kirk Price had a change of job description, and he feels. Uh, I guess everybody who's working these days are feeling overstressed. That's right. Everybody works more than I worked when I was working. <laughs> I retired in '97. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yep. Unless you can get one of those other uh, great government jobs or something, you know. Yeah. Well, I and none of us have are, are blessed in the U.S. with the. Uh, the vacation schedule that you get in Europe, so it that, makes that's a bit true. Different. But I think the Europeans are losing some of their, their uh, vacation days too. So oh, okay. Yeah, they do have a lot more vacation days. Yeah. Well, it's great talking to you. I hope you do uh, great next week, and uh, hopefully we get sun and uh, wind and not uh, tremendous horrible thunderstorms. Sun, wind, lightning, tornadoes, maybe a hurricane. <laughs> what do you want? We, we've got it for you. Come on down here to Florida. Okay. Great talking to you.